It was my first big audio show. Did I have fun? Stick around and find out. Hi, I'm Bob and you, my friends, are back in the United States of Analog. Welcome. We like to have fun with hi-fi and audio here because you know what? If you're not having fun, you're doing it wrong. So, you know, we all get there in different ways. So don't hate, participate here at the United States of Analog. Like, subscribe, do all that stuff, and I won't bother you the rest of the show because we have something really cool to talk about today. The Southwest Audio Fest in Dallas, Texas. I was there, dangerously close to Austin, Texas, where I live, the ATX. My wife and I made the trip up there. And let me tell you, first and foremost, having my wife on the trip was great. Number one, she's a great front man, if I can use that expression. She got me talking with people and going into rooms that maybe I couldn't have gotten into otherwise. So I pushed her out front and let her trailblaze the way. She's a great salesperson in her own right. The second benefit of that whole thing is that she, I think she got into it. She sat down in the listening rooms with me. We were analyzing speakers and things like that. She was having great conversations with the distributors and, and vendors and other influencers. What I'm learning in this audio game, first and foremost, get your spouse involved, get your loved ones involved. It makes your life as an audiophile, as a hi-fi enthusiast, that much more simple and easy. Take my word for it, don't exclude them. It's a big tent, let everybody in, all right? Okay, everything is bigger in Texas, we know that. Don't mess with Texas. But when it comes to audio shows, I think we still have some growing to do. This was the first year of the Southwest Audio Fest, and it was a good year. I don't think it's the biggest audio show that's ever been put on. I know there are many bigger ones, there are probably better ones, but I think it was a great start, and I think Southwest Audio Fest will be back. And I wanted to give you my I don't know, five highlights for me personally. We're gonna talk a little bit about some equipment that I saw that I enjoyed, and we're gonna talk about some people that I met. So stick around here. Let's get to number one. As soon as I unpacked my bags, my wife and I made a beeline to the Gishelli Lab suite. They had, uh, they had a double suite. They had headphone amplifiers and DACs and an array of headphones in one room, and then a great listening room with the Zufa amp and the Daisy DAC and some Perlisten speakers, and that room was fantastic. But the reason I went there first is because they were first to support this channel. Gishelli Labs out of Melbourne, Florida, the first to reach out to me and say, hey, we wanna help you grow United States of Analog, and they have been fantastic. So I paid tribute to Sherry and Gino and Rachel and uh, Jake and, and Courtney. I paid tribute to them because they deserved it. And I went up there and they gave me a hero's welcome. I got a hug from Gino and, and Sherry and my wife hit it off. And it was, it was just fantastic. This family, okay, this audio family are everything that is great about our hobby and about this business. They're fun loving, they're passionate, they make great equipment, they're great at marketing, they're scaling their business at the right pace. They're doing all the right things. And if I sound like a fanboy, well guess what? I am. I am a Gishelli Labs fanboy, okay? Guilty as charged, but they were the first in, they were the first to help out here at the United States of Analog, and I want to recognize them for that, and I, 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 I love them. And we spent a great deal of time over the three days just hanging out in their suites. And, and one of the cool things about Gishelli Labs, they let me play uh, the music I wanted to play to, to test out their equipment, and I love that Zufa amp. That Zufa integrated amp that they do, uh, is fantastic. It, it, it's, it's like nothing else I've ever heard and like nothing else I've ever seen in that space. And I think it's off to a great launch. The Daisy DAC, the full-size DAC that they're doing now is also fantastic. Those were paired up. They had some Perlisten Tower speakers and it was just a wonderful room to be in. It sounded great. Probably the highlight of my journey to Dallas to the Southwest Audio Fest. And I look forward to seeing them at Expona in Chicago. Number two. Black Ice Audio, also 
early supporters of the United States of Analog, they rented a big room down on the down on the main floor room and they teamed up with Zoo Speakers. Now, I've been trying to get involved with Zoo Speakers for some time. I've seen Steve G talk about them a lot and Cheap Audio Man, and I couldn't wait to get in there and listen to their fantastic, fantastic speakers paired up with Black Ice Audio Electronics. They had two setups going on at the same time on each end of the room. I don't know how that all worked out, but it was kind of strange because the systems were close, but you'd sit in front of one and you couldn't hear the other and, and vice versa. So they had different Black Ice amps going on, uh, phono preamps. They had Sean from Zoo spinning his personal records in there and he would take requests. I recognized a lot of the, uh, we, we were kind of in the same wheelhouse musically. He had a lot of the albums that I have behind me, but Sean uh, was great and uh, gave me a lot of information about Zoo Speakers. He was like the vibe director of that room and it, and it was it was super cool. And, and Black Ice has a lot to offer. Listen, they're direct, okay? They're direct to consumer. Again, we're talking about a company whose heart and whose heads are in the right place. They have you in mind. We had great conversations with Jamie. We had great conversations with Jared and Joey G, who also has a channel. He's an influencer too. I'm telling you, that was just a super cool room to listen to music and hang. And I hope they'll be in Chicago as well. But again, Black Ice Audio, Zoo Speakers, great combination, great people, great American direct to consumer audio companies and we love that because that enables us to get a lot of quality audio and keep a little money in our pockets. Number three, I got to meet several times with TJ of Access Audio. They're a distributor and they, they, they have a lot of great brands. They had a great setup on the 14th floor of the Anatole Hotel in Dallas. And what drew me in was the Accuphase electronics. I don't know why Accuphase speaks to me. I haven't even heard that much Ac Accuphase in the past, but the looks alone draw me in. And I would probably be predisposed to buy Accuphase gear even without hearing it. That's how great it looks. It has all that old school vibe that appeals to me, that Japanese design, the, the colored dials and the lights that are just a throwback to the 70s. Heavyweight, great stuff. And they were powering, very odd, but great sounding speakers, these Locrian speakers, Locrian Unicorn Mark II, I believe. They're, they're $27,000 to $31,000 speakers, depending on the finish or whatever, but they sounded great. There are these speakers that kind of threw sound all around the room. You can see here in the photos kind of the unique driver up top that shoots down over this cone. I don't know exactly how they work. I didn't get into it, but man, they sounded fantastic in that room. Uh, I enjoyed meeting TJ, enjoyed listening to those Locrians and that Accuphase equipment. Again, one of the top experiences I had at Southwest Audio Fest. Number four. Let's talk about more speakers because these were my favorite speakers of the show. They weren't the biggest, they weren't the most expensive, but they weren't the cheapest either. We're talking about the Endo Audio Bravura 7.2. Now I sat down and dug in and listened to, you know, I didn't get to hear my music, but I, I listened to some of some of the tracks that they were they were laying on me. And man, I don't know what it was about these speakers, but in that space, at that time, probably the best speakers I heard at the show. And I, you know, I can't say I heard everything that was on display, but I heard a great deal. And there was something about these speakers that spoke to me. Now let's talk about what's in them. A 22 millimeter tweeter in a 3D printed waveguide. Now, before you get your kid's 3D printer out and think about making your own speakers, they told me it was a very specialized 3D printer. So, you know, don't try this at home. But they had an array of nine 
small, I think inch and a half mid-range speakers that went all around the back of the waveguide that shot off in every at every different angle. Before you go thinking that, oh my God, this is the re reincarnation of Bose. You're saying to yourself, oh, I don't dig that multi-directional sound. There's something about these speakers that spoke to me at that time in that space. I'm going to write to Endow and see if there's any way I can get a pair of those smaller 7.2s in to my home to audition just to see if the magic I heard there I can reproduce in my own home because I would think about buying those speakers at $4,900. That's not the cheapest pair of speakers I've ever heard in my life, but man, it, it, from what I heard, it's worth every penny. Fantastic bass, fantastic imaging, not wishy-washy at all. I love those speakers. Man, I can see those on my solid steel stands in my main listening area. Bravo to Bravura, number five. I'm new to the audio space. I've been at this for about seven months now. And I wanna thank my friend Randy, the Cheap Audio Man, for encouraging me along the way and not letting me quit when, 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 when the going gets tough. Because it's a grind, man. <laughs> it's a lot. But you know what? For me, to meet some of the heroes, some of my audio heroes that I started watching during the pandemic on YouTube when I got tired of watching television news and decided that, you know, I wanted to get back into audio and learn about it and, and watch some of these fantastic characters like John Darko and Steve Gutenberg and A-Rob and, and Cheap Audio Man and Lenny from Just Audio in Baltimore. Listen, if you had told me back in the middle of the pandemic, that someday I'd be sitting around having some, having hamburgers and, and, and throwing back shots of whiskey with, with Lenny and, and, and having dinner with those guys and cheap audio man and the family from Gishelli all at one, all at one picnic table, I would have said, you're crazy. Now listen, I've been in radio for 32 years. You name the rock star, I've met them. You name the film star, I've probably met them. I've interviewed Ringo. I've talked to all kinds of people that were heroes to me when I was younger and then later in life got to meet them or interview them or whatever. But I don't know if I've had any bigger thrill than than meeting Randy, the cheap audio man, and hanging out with Lenny from Just Audio. I'm telling you, look at the smile on my face. I mean, it was the highlight of the show. It was just magical, and if I'd never heard a speaker at this show, if I'd never heard an amplifier, I would have considered going to that show a success. These are friendships that I hope to keep the rest of my life, and it's only at events like this that that can happen and I'm, 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 so, I'm so grateful and I'm pinching myself that I'm in some small way part of, of, of that world. I'm nowhere near as good as either of those two gentlemen and I certainly don't know as much about audio as Gino and Sherry at Shelley, but they're letting me in and they're accepting me and that is super gratifying. I think the takeaway is this was a this was a great show. It has room to grow. Expona is next. I think we're going to try to make that one. If you have a chance to go to an audio show, do. Keep an open mind. Keep your schedule flexible and just go and have a good time and don't be afraid to approach your favorite influencer, YouTuber, or manufacturer, right? For the most part, everybody is super cool and we all basically want the same thing. And that's to enjoy the healing properties of music through great equipment, expensive or inexpensive. Yeah, okay, there's, there's a few people that are a little snobby and you're gonna see some stuff at a show like this that resembles audio snake oil, but that's all part of the fun of it. It's a circus. <laughs> it's a circus. It's a big tent of people and manufacturers and equipment and music and everything. So don't get bogged down. Just open your mind, enjoy, and we'll see you outside of Chicago in Schaumburg, Illinois for Expona. And we'll see you next time in the United States of Analog. What? Dylan?
No, no, no. I didn't. Uh, I I didn't bring you anything. I, I the program. You you can you can have the program. <laughs>